part rating using first inversion chords may seem a little daunting and actually create complexities just because you're adding more elements to the part rating, but it actually creates a much more musical line. For instance, as you'll notice here, you can create a much more, much smoother stepwise motion in the bass line. It doesn't mean it's not going to leap, but you can create stepwise mo motion more often in the bass line, which can open up possibilities melodically in the soprano and even the alto and the tenor line. So there are a variety of reasons why composers do this, why this is, a, a, this is useful for you when you're doing your part writing, but it, yes, it opens up more possibilities and there are potentially more errors, but it also allows for a lot more freedom um, in creating uh, your voices and what you want to do melodically and, and harmonically even. So let's take a look and here's just a quick example, five chords. Um, I chose to use two first inversion uh, triads. We're in minor just because that makes for, um, uh, it. Some, a lot of times you'll see examples in major, but I'd like to use minor because of some of the problems that minor poses as well. So you'll, five, six, and one, six, very common um, first inversion chords, and let's go through uh, the process of adding voices and see what can occur. So, first things first, let's choose a top voice. And now, a lot of times, probably many of you will go ahead and put the leading tone in the soprano voice, but since it's already in the bass voice, we can't very well do that. Not only is that the third, but you never double the leading tone, because especially in the outer voices, the leading tone must resolve to do. Uh, very, very, very rarely will you see it do something else in the literature and almost even more rare than that in minor. So so we certainly can't double the leading tone regardless of, of, uh, of what might be going on. So let's pick another voice and let's say we want the root of that chord. So in the key of E minor, we want so in the soprano. Let's keep going with this. Now let's keep it nice and simple and keep so in the soprano as it resolves to do in the bass. Um, if we want to make it a little bit more interesting, I suppose we could leap up, but I'm going to choose to stay put, keep it nice and simple. 1-6, not turning into the most interesting bass, uh, soprano line, but that's alright. Um, you have a much more interesting bass line, which is kind of nice as well. And you'll notice that it makes a difference too when the bass line is much more interesting. Let's go ahead and add May, or the third of the four chord. I suppose, I'm sorry, that's not May in the key of E minor, it's actually Lay, but it's May in the four chord itself, or the third of the four chord. And then let's go back to Do, or rather So in the soprano line to complete this. Now, if this was in major, we could have probably gone up to T, but we can't do that in minor because of this augmented second. And in the outer voices, it's bad enough if you do it in the inner voices, but certainly in the outter voices, it sticks out like a sore thumb, so we're going to avoid that at all costs. Now let's go ahead and add the alto line. I'm going to go ahead and put the F sharp in there um, to, com to complete the chord and it's the next closest pitch and it's within an octave so we're uh, avoiding spacing issues. F sharp, uh, let's, it looks like it would be okay to complete the chord in the next pitch, back up to G and then we'll continue. Now we can't, sometimes you can double the third but in this case we don't necessarily need to so let's go ahead and go to do to complete the chord. Now we have three complete chords and we haven't even uh, added the tenor line yet. And then from here, uh, let's keep uh, let's keep do in the in the alto line to complete the four chord. And then going to this next one, we have a couple options. Let's say we want to go to T. We may choose to change that if it seems like it creates a much more smooth voice leading in the tenor. But let's. Let's go ahead and put T in there. It's nice to have that resolution from Do to T. It's, it's uh, much more satisfying if you're singing it and, it and it sounds very nice. So let's see if that's what we're going to ultimately keep. Now, in the tenor, we have a variety of options. Uh, since all the pitches are complete are, uh, are filled in, we've got complete chords in each one of these. Let's go ahead and double the root and see if we can double the root each time. It's too low. So doubling the root of five, and that's okay. Now we can stay put, or we can leap up to E. We have a couple options. I'm going to choose to do that so we're doubling the root and there's no egregious errors. And yes, it is a large leap, a fairly large leap in an inner voice, but that's okay because everybody else is either static, all the other voices are either static or moving by step. So that's nice that we have the stepwise motion in the bass. It allows us to have a little bit more freedom in the tenor where we might try to avoid leaping otherwise. 
We'll go to dough. Uh, let's maybe keep dough. We have a lot of dough going on here, but that's okay. We might as well double the root. Let's see. Going to the four chord, we have a couple of options. Can we leap down to can we leap down to the root of the four chord? Sure, why not? Again, we have a pretty leapy tenor line, but that's okay because we're moving by step or not moving at all in the other voices. So we're creating a pretty interesting uh, tenor line. It's not it, melodically, it's not too bad. It's the leaps aren't too; they're large, but it's it's very doable. It's within uh, within the uh, the purview of of uh, of voice leading rules that you might know to write in the soprano or bass line. And then now we have a couple options. Can we go to so? No, we cannot because we would have we would create this parallel octave. So we have a couple options, and probably the the best thing that we can do is leap down to F sharp to complete this chord. So if we had, let's going back briefly, if we had gone from E to F sharp, rather Do to Re, in here, we would have been left with completing this chord by adding that D sharp. Now there's nothing wrong with this chord in particular, but it gives us a tritone and a, and a leap up to a tritone in the tenor, which you know, if there are certain issues that you want to, there are certain voice leading and leaps that you want to do, that's definitely one of them. So we would have had to have changed it if we had put F sharp in the alto to begin with. So we made a good guess by keep going straight to T in the alto line earlier. Now we can complete the chord. It's leaping and it's leaping down, but nobody else is leaping. The soprano and alto and the uh, bass are all moving by step to their respective pitches. Um, and so this small leap of a third down to complete the chord is not an issue. So uh, I hope that makes a little bit of sense. Uh, just a quick overview of part writing when dealing with first inversion chords. You'll notice it creates uh, some more interesting problems and gives you a little bit more freedom to be more creative as you go through the process.